have to sacrifice, right? A lot of sacrifice has been made to organize this initiative. And we thank all of you for coming out and being a part. We recognize each and every one of you. Each and every one of you are a valuable and an asset to this movement. And so we thank you for coming out. But there are few people that get behind the movement and you don't see them a lot on the front lines, but you know, there's a group of people that are behind just pushing, pushing, pushing. So I want to introduce to you, we have a great alliance of individuals who, are, who have made this event and, and are continuing to do things that move this initiative forward. But I want to welcome Mr. Barry Fine. Barry, come. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> enough is enough. That's his slogan in the 27th district. Enough is enough. And when I met this gentleman and I saw that flyer and I said, he's speaking to me. Enough is enough. I'm a mother, wife, grandmother living in Newark and we know that enough is enough, Barry. And we thank you for your leadership and willing to take us to that place where we can realize some difference in our community. Thank you so much. Barry, give him a round of applause. I'll go this way. Thank you, Yvonne. Is she great? Yeah. Tough to follow that. Well, thank you all for being here today. My name is Barry Funt, and until recently, school choice had not been an issue that crossed my mind every day. My family and I are fortunate enough to come from a town with a decent school system. I send my children to public schools. My wife and I are satisfied with the results. And while I may be satisfied with the results of my local school district, I can no longer ignore that for millions of Americans, this is not the case. By goal of you, I'm a person who tries my best to work hard, feed my family, keep a roof over our heads and try to make life a little better for my children. For us who believe in the idea that America is a land of opportunity, we can no longer sit on the sidelines knowing that all around this country, especially right here in Newark, people are struggling every day with the knowledge that their children are not getting the education they deserve so they can take advantage of the opportunities that make this country great. Martin Luther King told us, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that this is one of those times. I am moved by the words of our founders, the truth that we have certain God-given rights to equality and liberty, and that the reason we form government is to protect those rights. Those words express a belief that we are each entitled to choose our own destiny, independent of any government might seek, to, might seek to restrain us. But while those words may have spoken of liberty and equality, the people who ran our government instituted policies that contravened these natural rights. While our nation was founded on high-minded ideals that should have been applied universally, the sad reality was that a dual system was permitted to exist. Slavery, marginalization, and other injustices continued for many years. But the words still had power. And over the decades since, we have corrected many injustices in our laws, brought people struggling near the fringes of our society into the mainstream, and taken a great many strides as a nation. Still, we have yet to fulfill the promise of those words, and we will not until we end the disparity of education that exists in our inner cities and our poorest communities. We have come to learn that money alone is not the answer. We spend more money in this state per child on education than any other state in the nation. Yet the results in certain areas are nothing less than shameful. The answer quite simply is choice. The idea of parental choice is a simple one. Who should decide where your child goes to school? Should it be the government who decides based on where your zip code is? Or should it be the parent who picks the school that's best for your child? Why would anyone want to deny the parents the choice to where to send their children to school? Certainly if the public school in your neighborhood is good, you have the first option to keep your child there, and if you make that choice, nothing will change. But if your neighborhood does not meet the needs of your child, why would anyone want to stop you from offering your child something better? Yet powerful interest groups work every day to continue to the government monopoly on education. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a time not long ago when our government worked to keep minority families out of good schools. Today, when a politician says that they're working against school choice, what they're really doing is working just as hard as their predecessors to keep minorities locked in bad schools. Parental choice is the defining civil rights issue of our time. 
To call this a mere education issue is to say Rosa Parks' choice of, of where to sit on a bus was a mere transportation issue. It is a civil rights issue because our government is denying parents basic rights to choose what is best for their children. We can no longer stay neutral in this struggle. This is the classic David versus Goliath struggle. The Goliath are the unions, the special interests and the government interests that are fighting for the status quo. The David are the children who are being left behind. They have no lobbying group. They don't contribute to political campaigns. They're not organized to fight for generous pension benefits and lifetime tenure. They are the unfortunate casualty of a system gone awry. History buffs out there know that today, July 2nd, marks the actual day the Declaration of Independence was signed. Let today also mark a new Declaration of Independence. We need to declare our independence from the government-run monopoly in education which does not address the needs of all of our citizens. On the dais and out here around us are people from different political parties, different ethnic backgrounds, different religious beliefs. Instead of being defined by what separates us, we stand united in the belief that the competitive forces unleashed by parental school choice will once and for all end the educational disparity that exists in our communities and permit this nation once and for all to give its citizens the chance to partake in the American dream. Thank you. It is, uh, it is now my esteemed pleasure to introduce our next guest, South Carolina State Senator Robert